So, question, what's worse than being homeless? No need to answer, I got this one. Uh, owing money. And yes, I get that the two are usually mutually exclusive. Like if I had to poop in a bush every once in a while, chances are money isn't in the best place. You know what I'm saying? But just play along here with me for a second. Let's pretend they were, and if that was the case, homeless beats owing money every time. I mean, would you rather have the anxiety of owing a large sum of money to a 60 year old Indian man in Anaheim who inflict massive consequences on you if you don't pay up in two days, or sleep in front of Arby's every once in a while. Yo, for me, it's Arby's sleep nine times out of 10. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't always get to make the choices we want to. And in my situation, with the amount of money I had to pay in two days, I wish I could just sleep in front of an Arby's instead. I really don't know why I mentioned he was a six-year-old Indian man in that bit, but I, we're gonna commit. Now, if you're watching this, this video right here is a part three to my day zero series. So if you haven't checked out the other two, uh, please do that right now so this makes sense. If you don't wanna watch part one, you can watch part two because it has a nice little recap at the beginning uh, and this one doesn't because I'm lazy. So I opened a message from the owner of the Airbnb and it read, hurt as parental agreement, you can't have a party on property. City code enforcement has called me around 12.45 at night, so I had been there. I show many people on property. City enforcement has given violation notice. There is a fine I will pass on to you. I let you know the amount tomorrow. Please refrain to do party on my house. Otherwise, I have to evict you from rental. Please cooperate. Thanks. All right, this might sound racist, but his broken English definitely put the fear of God in me. If God is a six-year-old Indian man in Anaheim. So I chill out for a second and just take a couple like feng shui breaths and identify a couple takeaways. One, we're not getting evicted. <laughs> Which was my main concern the whole time. So thank you, kind sir, for giving us a second chance after I intentionally disobeyed your house rules and lied to your face. We will take advantage of your kindness. Thank you very much. Number two, AKA, probably the one that should have been number one, there is a fine that I'll pass on to you. And to me, that sounded like not a big deal at all. But I mean, what? It was our first offense. It's not a big deal. It had to be like $200 tops for the fine. And because it was my fault, I'll just body it myself. Whatever, no big deal. I'm good at making decisions. Takeaway three. And the one that ended up being our greatest downfall. Please refrain to do party on my house. Otherwise, I have to evict you from rental. Okay, there's gonna be like a slight, slight problem with that one. So I didn't mention this in the other parts, but the mixed drinks as the resident community alcoholics had already planned and promised a party every night for the community. Like four nights in a row, it was every night, it was like every, so we had to have these parties and events. We had to host them, no matter what. So we did what we had to do. No, you guys didn't. Yo, we risked it all. Oh no and rented out a hotel. Oh. Yeah, so we planned on copying hotels on our dime to host the next party and the Smash Tournament. And you're probably wondering, Kurt, don't you have a fine to pay? And actually, yes, I do. But with like most things and money I owe, I'm not gonna think about it right now. Again, biggest downfall. See, I wasn't the one directly paying for hotels. The rest of the mixed drinks crew were. What would happen is that they'd send me money, i get it in X amount of business days, and then i pay for alleged shady hotel. So after taking inventory, all in all, aside from some money and a lot of respect, we haven't lost anything important, so we're good. So after handing all that, I kind of go about the rest of my time at VidCon as I usually do, uh, very irresponsibly. The first day goes by and I hear nothing from the owners, whatever. We go about business as usual, cop a hotel for the party, that's money out the bank, account but we're probably still good for the fine whatever cool next day comes again nothing from the owners whatever bump it we ball buy a new hotel for the smash tournament because the one we got originally got a noise complaint yo this party is insane check this out i have crippling depression but seriously we did get a noise complaint and my depression isn't that crippling but anyways again bump it we ball that's money at the bank account we're probably still good for the fine let's play smash and not put on deodorant it's fine and as that day is going on maybe like in the middle i check my my phone and bloop, there it is the message from the owners we finally know what the fine is all right the, the judgment day has come and the results were a bit more than i thought the fine is one thousand dollars like you i think you there's like an extra o on that like two of them like there's like two extra zeros 
on this. Y'all y'all made a mistake. We owe this man one grand, and we had till Monday. <laughs> if, if those of you don't know, that's two days, two days to cough it up. The list of people I owe in life is long enough, all right? My mother's uterus for the birth, y'all, usually with explanations. And now I have to put 60 year old Indian man from Anaheim on that list. Now, obviously this was a lot more than my original estimate. I checked my bank account to see what I can do. And well, let's just say, even if it was 200, uh, I wouldn't have had it. See, after paying for all the hotels and food and such and money transfers, all my cash was in limbo. So I had, I mean, let me tuck it all in there. Uh, yeah, nothing. And after doing the math, even if that money did come in, I was barely affording lunch anyway. So let alone pay one grand today. <laughs> now you can see why I'd rather be homeless. Like I'm not trying to get my knees capped by like some like gangster, like Indian dude. All right, I'm, I don't know why I keep mentioning his races. I've raised. So like a damn board of directors, I sit everybody down at the table and see what we could do as a squad. You know, it's no longer Kurt's problem, it's a squad problem now. And as expected, everybody was out. Remember, these guys are paying for the hotels and whatnot, plus their own stuff. So we as a group uh, just don't have it. We really were in a pickle and had no other options except one. Now look, I'm not a big fan of asking people for money. Okay, I hate it unless I have to. Wait, don't you have a Patreon where you literally ask people for money? I hate it, honestly. Cause I feel like this stuff just isn't ideal. I think I should be able to do it on my own. It's hard to ask people for help. Okay, let me rewind real quick. Pride aside, there's nothing we can do. I have no other options. I have to ask other people for help. This is essentially a GoFundMe, but instead of like GoFund some actual important cause or something, it's GoFund Kurt not getting his ankles broken by a six year old Indian man in Anaheim. There I go again, saying it. <laughs> so I typed up something in Discord straight from my heart, then put in my PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App at the end like some kind of Instagram hoe and just sent it out into the ether. But I mean, like, look, I think we got a chance. The animation community's tight. I had a good time. I think they had a good time. I hope that translates into them giving me money out of guilt. Then we waited like an hour, all hopeful to see what donations came in. And we had, oh my gosh, guys, we didn't get anything. All right, I gotta lie. I was a little salty, all right? In fact, I'm pretty sure everyone in the house was pretty salty. Uh, to the point where we made a song about it. So all y'all got me waiting. Who the f is paying? They staying up in the Yeah, we're pretty they mad. Coming, like, <laughs> so the day goes on and I'm stressing. Like I'm at the convention, big time depressed. If you see any pictures of me from VidCon post first day, I look happy. But one of my best skills is lying, especially in the face area. I look happy, but I promise you behind those eyes, I am like dreading everything. See, after that first initial scare of seeing no money donated to the help Kurt not get his ankles broke by an, a nice man, see, I didn't do it that time, fund. I wasn't too inclined on seeing no money in my bank account twice. Like the idea of checking caused me way too much anxiety. I really was not feeling it. It's like that whole thing, like, would you want to know if you had cancer? And to be honest, no, I don't. I wanna live anxious free and then just drop dead in the street. That would be optimal. That's what I would want. But at this point, it's like we have symptoms. I gotta know now, it's too late. <sighs> so I gotta check. So I open up all my money apps and we have three fourths of it. All right, okay. Uh, maybe animators are just slow on the pickup. Maybe they were threatened by my lyrical prowess or maybe they saw how dead and died I was at the crowd made booth. Who knows? But my people came through. They slow, but they came through. And I never talk about my love for the animation community, my peers, and but you really want to sing their praises when they give you 700 odd dollars. Like that definitely helps. Over the course of that day and the following day, we raised the whole $1,000, all of it. I even remember telling people we had everything already and people still gave us money. So I thought we'd just give the extra money to the owners as apology to make amends and to salvage my rating on Airbnb. Anyways, I ended up taking Imaginary Ambition and Frugal Static to Denny's with it. Look, it's not a bad move. They handled everything when I was gone. That's the least I could do. Also, MJ, I owe you Denny's. All in all, everything turned out all right. I learned a lot on that VidCon trip, mostly about being more responsible and being more dependent. The most contradictory lesson. You gotta be able to depend on people, even when you mess up. And I appreciate everyone who helped us out. So now on my list of people I owe, I can cross off Indian Man and I can put on 
A lot of nice white and Asian people who draw in their rooms. I'm really sticking to this race thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we made it, it's the end of the Day Zero anime arc. It's been a ride, but we did it. And I got back to Ohio totally fine. And with a big lesson. Mostly that for Day Zero 2020, we gotta do things a little different. 2020, baby, let's go. <laughs> you thought we learned a lesson and said stop? Wrong. Bro, it's gonna be bigger and better, probably legal this time. So if anyone wants to sponsor that, hit me up, cause that'd be dope. <laughs> Oh, what's up, y'all? Yo, the boy is back, and we finished it. We finished the trilogy. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a ride, so thank you to everyone who was involved and everyone who sent me lines. It's been a great video and something I'm really gonna resonate with for a while. Um, you heard in the video, uh, I have a Patreon, uh, but I wouldn't join it now. Wait till the first of the month so you don't get charged twice. But you should join that. It's not officially launched yet, but it will be next week, but we'll talk about that more later. That's really about it. Not much to say, except thanks for watching. Uh, recording this today is my birthday, so it's been a solid day. Video's done ahead of time. We're good. All right, y'all. Peace.